एस्ट्रोलॉजी एंड स्पिरिचुअल अटेनमेंट दिस विल बी द लास्ट टॉक इन द सीरीज ऑन एस्ट्रोलॉजी एस्ट्रोलॉजी कैन सर्टेनली बिकम अ डोर टू स्पिरिचुअल अटेनमेंट If man is slave to his destiny, as astrologers generally seem to assert, and this has been ingrained into us, if everything is predestined and inevitable, then all religions are of no use, because the religion is a way to provide you freedom. If man is free to do everything as the so-called rationalists say, and if nothing is predestined, predetermined, or inevitable, then life will become just a chaos and anarchy. Then it is also possible that a man may steal and is still attain to liberation. that he may murder people and still realize the divine when nothing is related when one step is not related to another then there is no law and nothing is binding anywhere there are three areas of life in the area which is essential core everything is predetermined knowing this is knowing the essence of astrology in the area which is peripheral everything is uncertain to know this is to know the everyday unpredictable world there is yet another area in the middle by knowing this one can save himself from trying to do the impossible and he can do what is possible if a man lives in the peripheral and middle areas in such a way he begins to move towards the center it will become religious but he, if he lives in such a way that he is never been able to move towards the center life will remain irreligious religion means moving towards the center revolving around the center center is the axis i have given you the example of mahavir and goshala how mahavir connected to the soul of the tree soul of the plant to make a prediction it happened in pondicherry where shri aurobindo's ashram is when aurobindo was being built there was a tree that was coming up in the middle of the temple that was that is known as matri mandir it is said all this is what i had heard nothing more than that can anyone explain said the spirit of the tree came to the mother and asked her not to remove the tree and it is when mother the tree the spirit of the tree communicated with the mother she instructed that this tree be not cut and the tree is still stands there in the middle of matri mandir the temple that is created as a center for meditation also where my grandfather sufi bajmohan lal used to live that was a big residential place in one portion of the building sufi brijmohan lal used to live and on the other side where his younger brother who is known as bhai sahab radha mohan lal he used to live in his in the area 
occupied by him there was a lime tree. So it happened the second son of Sufi Bridge Mohan Lal picked up a lime one day from that tree and there was a commotion and also the details are not important. Sufi Brajmohanlal has explained about his middle son that if he had a longer life he would have been a great mystic but he does not have a life longer life and he used to remain sick. There was a big commotion when the lime was picked. Then Sufi Brajmohanlal instructed one of his disciples to pick all the limes from that tree. When the limes were being picked, my grandmother, she got happy that she, is, she thought that she is going to get all that basket of lime and she can make pickles and all that is normally limes are used for making pickles. After the limes were picked up, he took the limes and threw it away. And then looking at the tree, he said, From now onwards, this tree will remain green, but will not bear any lime. And that tree remained green, but it did not bear any line. It is possible to communicate with the trees, what we call as insentient. In recent time, Jagdish Chandra Bose did a research and he tried to develop the equipment to measure the sensitivity of the plants. I remember a story about Mullah Nasruddin. Once he was passing by a mosque when suddenly someone fell from one of the minar of the mosque where he had climbed to say his prayers. The man fell right onto Mullah's shoulders and Mullah's spine was broken. So Mullah was taken to the hospital for treatment. One of his disciples came to see him and because Mullah had the habit of interpreting all events, they asked him, how do you interpret this event? What does this mean? Mullah replied, it is very clear that there is no relationship between an, between an egg and its fruits. One person falls and someone else's spine breaks. And so from now on, never enter into any controversy about the doctrine of karma. It has been proved that one person may fall and that the spine of another can break. The person who fell was healthy and hearty. He fell on me and I got in a mess. I had not climbed the minar to say my prayers. I was just returning home. It was not in any way concerned with the prayers, but still I got involved. So from now onward, no more talk about the doctrine of karma. Anything can happen. There is no law. It is all anarchy. Mullah was very unhappy, naturally because his spine has been unnecessarily broken. There are two hypotheses. On one hand, there is the astrologer who is sitting on this, sitting by the side of the road, being asked about non-essential. How are the elections connected with moon and stars? The ordinary astrologer who replies, everything is predetermined and no changes, not even as much as one inch can be made. 
is making a false statement. On the other hand, there is the rationalist. He says that nothing is inevitably connected. Whatsoever happens is coincidental, circumstantial and a matter of chance. There is no law. Everything is anarchy. He is also making a false statement. There is a law. A rationalist is never found to be as full of joy and bliss as Buddha. The rationalist de denies God, the soul and religion with the help of logic, but he can never attain to the joy that Mahabir or Buddha had. Certainly Mahabir must have done something that earned him his joy. Buddha must have done something that liberated him and Krishna must have done something which has made it possible for him to give out such distinctly unique and magical notes through his flute. The real thing is the third, which is the quintessence of everything and which belongs to the innermost and which is absolutely predetermined. The more one moves towards one's center, the nearer one comes to the essential, the predetermined part. As we move towards the periphery, we move towards coincidence. The more we talk about external happenings, the more there is coincidence. When we talk about the inner phenomena, things begin to appear very scientific, as if based on a definite law, they become more and more decisive. Between these two conditions, the essential and the peripheral, there is ample room to effect changes by exercising one's freedom of choice. Here someone with awareness will make the correct choice whereas the person who is in the darkness of ignorance will drift into destiny, putting up with whatever comes his way. They always remember the incident that I had mentioned to you of Holy Prophet when in response to a question of Hazrat Ali, he said the first choice is always yours and there is freedom and when you had made that choice you are bound by that so there are three areas of life in the area which is the essential core everything is predetermined knowing this is knowing the essence of astrology in the area which is peripheral everything remains uncertain to know this is to know the everyday unpredictable world and there is yet another area which is in the middle. By knowing this, a person can save himself from trying to do the impossible. He can do what is possible. If a man lives in the peripheral and the middle areas in such a way that he begins to move towards the center certainly he will become religious. But if he lives in such a way that he is never ever to move towards the center, his life will remain irreligious. For example, there is a person who is trying to, preparing to steal. Stealing is not predetermined. It cannot be claimed that stealing is inevitable or unavoidable. There is complete freedom whether to steal or not. But once the theft has been committed, it is as if one foot has been lifted and the other foot remains on the ground. After doing it, you cannot undo the act. 
and the total effect of the act of stealing will, will spread over the personality of the person who did it. But as long as stealing does not happen, the other alternative is present and available. Mind swings between two limits, yes or no. If he says yes to stealing, he will be thrown towards the periphery. If he says no to stealing, he will move towards the center. Thus, in the middle there is a choice. If he makes the wrong choice, he is thrown towards the periphery. If he makes the right choice, he moves towards the center, towards the part of astrology which is essential in life. I have told you certain things about essential astrology. I have told you that we are the outstretched hands of the sun, that earth is born out of the sun and we are born out of the earth. So we are not separate. We are all united, bound by a causeless force. We are branches and leaves that have spread out from the sun. Whatsoever happens at the core of the sun will vibrate and spread throughout and within one's being. You remember if there is something that happens in one part of the body, its vibrations spread throughout the body. If we can understand this properly, we will realize that we are one family on this planet. Then there is no need to live encased within ego and pride. The heaviest blow of astrology is upon ego. If astrology is right, then ego is wrong. Let us understand this in a different way. If astrology is wrong, then nothing remains to be right except ego. If astrology is right on the other hand, then world is right and only I as an island am wrong. I am only an infinitesimal part of the world. I am so minute that I cannot even be included in the count. If astrology is right, then I am not there. There is a huge flow of forces in which I am only a tiny ripple. Sometimes as we ride a big wave, we are under the illusion that we too are something special and we forget about the big wave. This big wave is also riding upon the ocean of which we are completely unaware. If ocean disappears below it, the wave will disappear and we will also disappear. Without any reason we become unhappy about the possibility of our disappearance only because we have counted to be happy through our belief in our own separate existence. If we had realized that there is only one big wave and the vast ocean and that we are not, that it is the wish of the ocean that we arise on it that it is the wish of the ocean that we die, then there is no problem. If an attitude arises in us and we realize that we are only a fraction of the great design of the existence, then there will be no unhappiness. And with such an attitude, this so-called happiness which we want to enjoy will also not be there. A feeling of happiness over such thoughts as I have won, I have attained, 
will no longer be there. Nor there will be a feeling of unhappiness over thoughts that I am dying, I am finished, I have drowned, I have been destroyed or defeated. And when neither happiness nor unhappiness remains, we enter into another world, the world of reality, the world of the ascension. There is bliss. And astrology can become the door to the bliss, can become door to this innerness. If we look at astrology as the melting of our pride, or as an as disintegration of ego, then astrology can really become a religion. But we go to the ordinary astrologer, and in order to protect our ego, we ask, will I run into loss? Will I win the lottery? Will I succeed in the new business that I am undertaking? Such questions are asked in order to save our egos. But the fact is that astrology is entirely against ego. The significance of astrology is that you are not instead the universe it. You are not but the cosmos is. Very powerful forces are operating and you are absolutely insignificant in front of that. You can only see astrology in this light if you think and feel that you are an integral part of this entire cosmos. That's why I have told you the whole solar family is connected with sun. If you can realize this, you will also realize that our sun is connected with many larger suns in the universe. Scientists say that there are 4 billion suns and all are born from some bigger sun. We have no knowledge of where that supreme sun may be. We do not know how this earth is rotating around its axis and also revolving around the sun. Nor do we have, nor do we know where the center is around which our sun with its family is revolving. A great universal merry-go-round is in Sun. Hindu, in Hindu temples, there is an isle called Parikrama. Parikrama means circumambulating or encircling the image of the deity. This isle is symbolic of the fact that everything is rotating by itself and also revolving around something else. Then these two together revolve around the third thing. And these three in turn revolve around the fourth and so on and so forth until we reach ad infinitum. The ultimate center of infinity is referred to by those who know as Brahman, the ultimate reality. This ultimate center is neither rotating nor revolving around anything else. Whatsoever is rotating itself will definitely revolve around something else. But that which is, that which neither rotates nor revolves is ultimate. The ultimate is stationary. It is also known as supreme silence or void. Christians say it is in the beginning there was word and the word was with God. This is the axis, the pivot around which the whole universe expands and contracts. Hindus thought just that just as a bud becomes a flower and flower withers, 
Similarly, the universe also expands and then disintegrates. That just as there is day and night, the universe also has day and night. There are cycles of 11 years and cycles of 90 years. Similarly, Hindus thought that there are cycles of billions and trillions of years. During such a cycle, a universe is born, passes through various stages of youth, grows old, earths are born, moons and stars spread across the universe, populations grow, and millions of living creatures are born. This is not only happening on Earth. Now scientists say that there must be a minimum of 50,000 planets on which there is life. There may be even more, but this is the minimum. In such an infinite universe, it is impossible that only one Earth should have life. There are 50,000 planets or Earths on which there is life. It is an infinite expense and then everything contracts again. This Earth was not here from the very beginning. No, it shall last until the end. Just as I was born and I will cease to exist, this earth and the sun will also cease to exist. Time will come when these moons, stars and planets will also cease to exist. The circle of their being and not being continues. We are just infinitesimal rotating and revolving somewhere in the cosmic wheel. And if we still think that we are separate, then we are like Mullah, who was traveling in an airplane for the first time. As he entered the plane, and as the plane took off, he started walking along the aisle in the plane. He wanted to reach his destination very fast and was in a great hurry. Naturally, if you want to reach somewhere quickly, you will get there quicker if you walk faster. His co-passengers stopped him and asked, What was he doing? Mullah replied that he, is, he was in a hurry. He was traveling in a plane for the first time. And he was using the same logic which worked on the ground. There he always arrived more quickly when he walked faster. He did not realize that walking in the plane was useless. The airplane itself was flying and he would only exhaust himself by walking. He would not arrive anywhere any earlier and it is possible that why, that by the time he arrived, he would be so exhausted that he would not be able to stand up. He should rest. He should close his eyes and rest. But neither Mullah nor any other Pandit would agree with such advice. I call someone religious who is at rest within his cosmic circular movement of the universe. Someone who knows that universal forces are at work and that there is no hurry, that his hurry is of no use, is religious. If we can simply be one with the universal harmony, that is enough and that will bring bliss to you. I have told you certain things about astrology. If you understand these, then certainly astrology can become a door to spiritual attainment. And these are the things, the more you are meditating, the more you are relaxed, the bliss overflows, you will realize that you are in a plane 
that is moving at its speed, all you need to do be relaxed and you will reach your destination. This is the only way that astrology can become a door to the beyond.